This is the story of the Kyle Santiago rhesus monkey colony and the origins of the National Institutes of Health National Primate Research Centers program, produced by Dr. Matthew J. Kessler and Dr. Richard G. Rollins. The origins of the Cayo Santiago Colony were rooted in the Institute of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, started in 1912, which became the School of Tropical Medicine of the University of Puerto Rico under the auspices of Columbia University in 1926. Both were founded by Bailey K. Ashford, a pioneer in the field of tropical medicine, like his U.S. Army contemporary Walter Reed. The School of Tropical Medicine became the UPR School of Medicine in 1950. In 1936, George Bachman, the director of the School of Tropical Medicine, and Clarence R. Carpenter, who did his postdoc with Robert Yerkes at Yale, came up with the idea of a free-ranging gibbon and rhesus colony in Puerto Rico for biomedical and behavioral studies. Another objective was to supply domestically raised healthy rhesus monkeys to do research in labs in the United States. In the spring of 1937, Harold Coolidge of Harvard's Museum of Zoology led the Asian Primate Expedition, accompanied by Carpenter, Schultz, Washburn, and others. Gibbons brought back from Thailand were housed in cages at the School of Tropical Medicine until their release on Takayo Santiago. This is a photograph of Cayo Santiago taken in the late 1930s. The village of Punta Santiago on the southeast coast of Puerto Rico can be seen in the background. In February 1938, the Roig family, which owned Cayo Santiago, made the island available to the School of Tropical Medicine for the primate colony. This set the stage for Carpenter, the world's premier field primatologist, to lead a second expedition to Indochina and India which was funded by Columbia's Markle Foundation. From India's Lucknow region, Carpenter obtained about 500 rhesus for Cayo Santiago. In September 1938, they were transported 400 miles to Calcutta by rail for the voyage to Puerto Rico. After TB testing and the elimination of reactors or TB positive animals, Carpenter and the monkeys left Calcutta on the 6th of October, 1938, riding on the deck of a Cunard liner to New York City via Boston. Due to the impending World War II, the ship was ordered to do a test run around the tip of Africa rather than go through the Suez Canal. This made the trip longer and more risky, but they arrived safely in New York City 40 days later. After reaching New York City, approximately 40 adult females were sold to the Carnegie Lab in Baltimore, and the remaining approximately 450 monkeys were transferred to the SS Cuomo for the four-day voyage to San Juan. The SS Cuomo arrived in San Juan with Carpenter and the monkeys on the 21st of November, 1938. The monkeys were taken to the School of Tropical Medicine for holding and for additional TB testing. About 7.5% tested positive by the PPD skin test and were euthanized. This was considerably better than other Indian rhesus shipments of that era, in which up to 90% of the animals were TB positive. The arrival of the monkeys and Dr. Carpenter in San Juan Harbor on the SS Cuomo was heralded in the New York Times. This photograph, taken in 1938, shows Carpenter, the Tomlins, and the crew rowing from Punta Santiago out to Cayo Santiago, a distance of about one kilometer. Michael Tomlin cared for the monkeys from 1938 to 1947. During this time, he and his wife, Eugenie, lived in this house on Cayo Santiago. This photograph, taken in 1938, shows the rhesus colony in original shipping crates under quarantine on Cayo Santiago. Despite the TB testing done ashore, TB was actually brought to the island from India and was a health problem on Cayo Santiago until 1941. 
Ansel Meath, Life Magazine photographer, was sent to Cayo Santiago to document establishment of the colony. Here we see Michael Tomlin and the Cayo Santiago crew tattooing one of the 409 founder animals of the colony. This photo shows the release of the first monkey onto Cayo Santiago late in December of 1938. Here's a photo of the young workman, 14-year-old Ishmael Solis, who was an animal caregiver and boatman at Cayo Santiago in 1938. He's shown releasing a monkey. 70 years later, Ishmael came back to Cayo Santiago with Dr. Kessler and Dr. Rollins for a visit. This photo shows some of the founding members of the Cayo Santiago colony in 1938. Here's the famous photo spread from Life magazine of January 9th, 1939 on the establishment of the Cayo Santiago colony. These images of the monkeys, Michael Tomlin and Dr. Carpenter and the crew were taken by Hansel Meath. The purpose of the Cayo Santiago colony was to supply healthy monkeys for research on infantile paralysis, tropical diseases and tuberculosis. Carpenter also wanted a field site for the studies on social and sexual behavior of rhesus monkeys. On the 16th of January, 1939, Life magazine published one of its most famous animal photos ever, a meath close-up of a peripheral adult male in the shark-infested waters off Cayo Santiago. The editor inaccurately labeled it a misogynist seeks solitude in the Caribbean off Puerto Rico. A previously unknown and unpublished photograph of Meath misogynist discovered by the authors in the Clarence R. Carpenter collection of the Penn State University Archives is shown in this photo. Feed for the animals consisted mainly of fruits and vegetables grown on Cayo Santiago and on mainland Puerto Rico. Drinking water was provided by rain stored in cisterns on the island and distributed to automatic waterers around the island. Tomlin supplemented the local fruits and vegetables with corn and other grains imported from the states. Note the lack of personal protective equipment or even adequate clothing despite tuberculosis in the colony and knowledge of bee virus risks in macaques by 1933. Over 80% of the Cayo Santiago rhesus or herpes B virus antibody positive. Despite these risks, the Tomlins did have a pet baby rhesus named Pijita seen here at Tomlin Rock. Also note the lack of vegetation back then as the island had been used by the Reg family to graze goats. Ishmael Sola, seen here in front of Tomlin Rock in 2011, visited Cayo Santiago for the first time in 70 years. He is the only person alive who worked with Carpenter and Tomlin. He said that Eugenie used to take Pijita to town and let people pet her. He also filled in historical gaps and corrected long-held myths about Carpenter, Tomlin, and the island's primates. Ironically, his father was a crew member on the SS Cuomo. Here we see one of the 14 gibbons from Thailand, which were released onto Cayo Santiago in April, 1939. Carpenter and his wife are seen here arriving at Umacao Airport to study and film the monkeys on Cayo Santiago. His two classic movies on rhesus behavior and social organization were released in 1947. In 1939, the National Geographic magazine featured Cayo Santiago. Here we see Carpenter and his wife posing with the monkeys. Early biomedical research was conducted by James Watt in 1940 and focused on shigellosis epidemic that killed 26 pregnant rhesus. Other physicians studied strep throat. Here we see gibbons in a pen awaiting removal from Cayo Santiago in April 1941. Because they had their first infant killed by the rhesus, 
but mostly because they attacked and bit the wives of Dr. Watt and Michael Tomlin. This photo shows the Gibbons back in the cages at the School of Tropical Medicine in San Juan, awaiting shipment to zoos in the States in late spring 1941. After the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, and the entry of the United States into World War II, there was gas and food rationing in Puerto Rico. Despite this, people from Punta Santiago brought food out to Cayo Santiago to help keep the monkeys from starving. About 200 Cayo Santiago rhesus were caught in these cages and were shipped to the States for war-related research in 1943 and 1944 despite the risk of attack by German submarines. Funds from these and other sales helped maintain the colony. During World War II, many faculty and students were drafted into or volunteered to serve in the war, decimating the School of Tropical Medicine program. By mid-1947, due to all the problems during World War II, Columbia University was in the process of pulling out of the School of Tropical Medicine. The University of Puerto Rico could no longer afford to support the Cayo Santiago colony and offered the colony to any institution that would take them or sponsor the animals on the island. There was one proposal from Yale, but the lab there lacked the funds. The colony seemed doomed. By chance, Jose Guillermo Frontera, who got his BS in biology at UPR, was finishing his PhD in neuroanatomy at the University of Michigan. He heard about the plight of the monkeys and contacted the UPR Dean during Christmas week of 1947, convincing him to keep the colony until he could complete his degree, return to Puerto Rico, and obtain some funding. In the summer of 1948, Frontera returned from the University of Michigan with PhD in hand and was appointed acting chair of the University of Puerto Rico's biology department. In November of 1948, the University of Puerto Rico hosted an NIH site visit led by Drs. David Price and Ernest Allen, director and associate director respectively of the Division of Research Grants. As a result, in 1949, Frontera was awarded a NINDB grant for $15,000 per year to feed the colony and support his research. It was the first NIH grant in Puerto Rico's history and probably saved the monkeys. The achievement was heralded in the island's largest newspaper, El Mundo, and in a famous cartoon by Fogarty, En las Papas, meaning in the money. In 1950, the University of Puerto Rico School of Medicine opened, and the Cayo Santiago colony was transferred to it from the University of Puerto Rico's College of Natural Sciences. Frontera also moved to the School of Medicine. With funds again running out for the colony, in May 1955, Frontera went to Bethesda and met with William Windle, chief of the NINDB Laboratory of Neuroanatomical Sciences, about the problem. In August and September of 1955, Windle visited Puerto Rico and met with Frontera and his former grad students, Drs. Max and Maria Ramirez de Arellano, about collaborative primate research. They were noted neuroscientists. In November of 1955, then Senator John F. Kennedy announced that NINDB would be funding research on cerebral palsy and funds were assigned by Congress to establish a laboratory in Puerto Rico. In February of 1956, Pierce Bailey, NINDB director, and Wendell met with UPR officials, Puerto Rico's governor, Munoz Marin, and San Juan's mayor about opening the primate research lab in San Juan. In April, NINDB and UPR signed a contract establishing the Laboratory of Perinatal Physiology, or LPP, in San Juan. The missions of the LPP were to develop rhesus models of cerebral palsy and methyl retardation in order to determine the causes of these conditions and to find cures. Cayo Santiago became the LPP's behavioral ecology section and was to supply the lab in San Juan with rhesus monkeys. In September of 1956, the Laboratory of Perinatal Physiology was formally inaugurated with an international conference on neonatal asphyxia and cerebral palsy, which was hosted by the NINDB and the University of Puerto Rico. It was sponsored by the United Cerebral Palsy 
the Multiple Sclerosis Society and NSF. The proceedings were published in 1958 and included a chapter about the Cayo Santiago colony by Frontera. The LPP, originally located at the School of Medicine, was relocated to the old U.S. Public Health Service quarantine station in San Juan. Wendell and Maria Ramirez de Arellano are shown producing cerebral palsy in rhesus infants and studying these paralyzed and mentally retarded animals. Stuart Altman, E.O. Wilson's first Harvard graduate student, was put in charge of the Cayo Santiago colony. As part of his PhD dissertation research on the sociobiology of rhesus, in 1956, he began a daily census of the colony that continues until today. Altman tattooed, sexed, aged, measured, weighed, and TB tested all of the monkeys. This was the first accurate census of the population since the 1940s. In 1962, Altman's monograph on the Cayo Santiago macaques laid the foundation for the new field of sociobiology. This publication also provided data on rhesus growth and development, age estimation, dentition, reproduction, and demographics. Altman and Wilson returned to Cayo Santiago in 2007 to film a segment on the origins of sociobiology for the PBS Nova Wilson documentary, Lord of the Ants. In 1956, Wendell and James Watt, by then director of the National Heart Institute, visited our colleagues Boris Lapin and Lelita Yakoleva at the Sukumi Primate Center. Carl Crawford, who succeeded Altman at Cayo Santiago, visited them again in 1960. Crawford's visit led to this important book being translated into English and closer ties between NIH and the Sukumi Primate Center. In May 1960, Watt announced that the National Heart Institute was granting $1.9 million to the University of Oregon for the nation's second monkey colony, the first being Cayo Santiago and the LPP. Watt's experiences with Carpenter and Bachman at the School of Tropical Medicine in San Juan, his 1940 sugallosis studies with the rhesus on Cayo Santiago, the success of the Laboratory of Perinatal Physiology's work on cerebral palsy, and his visit to the Sukumi Primate Center in 1956 led him to formulate plans for the NIH Regional Primate Research Centers and to obtain another $2 million from Congress to establish it. By the mid-1960s, the LPP, in collaboration with UPR, was a highly successful international research operation consisting of the San Juan Lab and rhesus colonies on Cayo Santiago, the La Parguera Islands, and Desacheo Island. The Sabanaseca Field Station was being developed, and there were plans for a major NIH UPR primate laboratory on the UPR Medical Sciences campus. Although the LPP and its primate colony served as a model for the NIH Regional Primate Research Center's program, it was not included in the program for several reasons. This brochure covered the LPP's research program, its long-term plans for a permanent lab in Puerto Rico, and Cayo Santiago and its other primate facilities in Puerto Rico. The islands of La Cueva and Guayacan near La Parguera, Puerto Rico, initially housed rhesus from Cayo Santiago, and then the FDA rhesus breeding colony that ended up on Morgan Island, South Carolina in 1979. Pattis monkeys also resided here from 1971 through 1982. Desacheo Island, a rugged, arid island off Puerto Rico's west coast, was used for a rhesus adaptation experiment. Half of a social group from Cayo Santiago was put here without provisioning and compared with the other half left on Cayo Santiago. The monkeys survived remarkably well and reproduced despite the lack of food and water. This aerial photograph shows the Sabanaseca Field Station of approximately 270 acres of federal land early in its development by the LPP. Despite being left out of the Regional Primate Research Center's program, approximately $2 million of federal funds were designated to construct a new NINDB, LPP, NICHD primate research complex, about 14,000 square feet per institute, 
on the University of Puerto Rico's medical science campus, the Puerto Rico Medical Center in Rio Piedras. Unfortunately, due to jurisdictional disputes, politics, changes in NINDB directorship and priorities, and a gradual disintegration of the collaboration between the LPP and the School of Medicine, in 1968, NINDB decided to close the LPP. The new laboratory at the Puerto Rico Medical Center was never constructed. After publishing a volume of his collective works on primate field studies, in 1969, the NINDB asked Carpenter to head up a location study group to make recommendations on what to do with the Cayo Santiago colony and the LPP's other facilities. The location study group recommended and NIH agreed to the establishment of the Caribbean Primate Research Center under UPR with an animal resources branch now compared to medicine, contract beginning on 1 July, 1970. Ownership of the Cayo Santiago Colony reverted to UPR. The contract later became a competitive P40 grant. William Goodwin of NIH oversaw the contract and initial grant. When he retired, Leo Whitehair took over ARB and the grant. Establishment of the CPRC led to the development of the Savannah Seca Field Station as its headquarters and attracted a NINDS NIAID breeding contract for rhesus, pigtail macaques, and Barbados greens from 1971 to 1995, which was overseen by Bill London and later Randy Elkins. Adult males from Kyle Santiago were used as sires in the rhesus harems. The NIH squirrel monkey colony now at MD Anderson, also originated here during the 1970s. In October 1978, Wendell visited Cayo Santiago after a lapse of 14 years and published this article in Science two years later, crediting Cayo Santiago's success for the development of the NIH Regional Primate Research Center's program. Just five years after his article on Cayo Santiago was published, Dr. Wendell passed away. Wendell was the co-founder and director of NINDB, the Laboratory of Perinatal Physiology in San Juan. He was the recipient of the 1968 Lasker Award, America's Nobel Prize, for his work with rhesus monkeys in the creation of the cerebral palsy model, which was developed at the LPP in San Juan and resulted in major changes in human infant delivery procedures. An early history of the Cayo Santiago colony, including information on the origins of the Regional Primate Research Center's program, are in this volume based on the 45th Cayo Santiago Anniversary Symposium held in 1983 at the annual meeting of the American Society of Primatologists at Michigan State University. First-hand historical accounts by Frontera, Goodwin, Whitehair, and Southwick are contained in the Cayo Santiago 50th Anniversary Proceedings, which were published in the Puerto Rican Health Sciences Journal of April 1989. A comprehensive early history of the NIH Regional Primate Research Centers was subsequently published by W. Richard Duclos, former Regional Primate Research Centers Program Director. It contains a chapter on how the success of the Cayo Santiago Colony and the LPP led to the establishment of the Regional Primate Research Center's program. Leo Whitehair and many others, including some of the original Primate Center directors, helped Duclo with this history, published in 1995. Following a visit to Congress a decade earlier, in 1999, a trip was made in a further attempt to obtain a special appropriation for the Caribbean Primate Research Center to strengthen Cayo Santiago's and Sabana Seca's infrastructure. The ultimate goal was to get the CPRC incorporated into the National Primate Research Center's program. Meetings were held with President Clinton's assistant on Puerto Rico, congressional and NIH officials. In 2000, Puerto Rico's only congressional representative visited the CPRC and he subsequently submitted an appropriation request to the House. Edmundo Chryselberg, former CPRC director and former associate director Janice Gonzalez were later successful in obtaining five NIH grants, significantly increasing the CPRC's funding and infrastructure. Two of these grants established specific 
pathogen-free colonies using Cayo Santiago rhesus to supply the National Primate Research Centers. The CPRC also hosted two non-human primate models for AIDS symposia. The 2008 meeting coincided with Cayo Santiago's 70th anniversary. In June 2013, the 36th annual ASP meeting was held in San Juan to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Cayo Santiago colony. The history of the colony was reviewed, including its importance as a model for the Regional Primate Research Center's program. The photo on the right shows four generations of Cayo Santiago rhesus, actually the same family. Today, the CPRC consists of the following Cayo Santiago rhesus-related research resources. The Sabana Seca Field Station, which includes approximately 3,000 Cayo Santiago derived rhesus monkeys, including approximately 2,000 specific pathogen free rhesus. The CPRC skeletal collection started in 1970 by Donald Sade and Richard Rawlins with skeletons from Cayo Santiago rhesus has grown to almost 4,000 complete skeletons of 14 species. Pedigree and genetics are known for many rhesus. And of course, the Cayo Santiago free ranging rhesus colony uh, shown here in 2016, which contains approximately 1700 rhesus. Cayo Santiago remains a mecca for many types of behavioral studies for students worldwide. The colony is also a very important resource for genetics research. Over the past 40 years, more than 100 genetics articles have been published on the Cayo Santiago macaques, covering behavior to morphology to hereditary diseases. The first DNA fingerprints of rhesus were done on social group O monkeys translocated in its entirety to the German Primate Center in 1984. More than 4,400 of the monkeys who live or lived on Cayo Santiago have been genotyped. Maternity and paternity are known for more than 4,000 animals and many of their skeletons, and family trees for several generations deep. The Cayo Santiago rhesus population remains important and popular for long-term demographic studies. The illustrated investigation examined the effects of tetanus toxoid inoculation on survival, life expectancy, reproduction, and demographics over 24 years. For a detailed history of the Cayo Santiago colony, its impact on primate behavior and biomedicine, review articles, and current research, see the January 2016 special issue of the American Journal of Primatology at the link below. On September 20th, 2017, Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico. The eye, with peak winds of greater than 150 miles per hour, passed directly over Cayo Santiago and Punta Santiago, devastating the island and the local community. These two satellite images show the massive deforestation and infrastructure damage sustained by Cayo Santiago from Hurricane Maria. These photographs show the aftermath and extensive damage created by the hurricane on Cayo Santiago. This photograph taken immediately after the storm shows the Cayo Santiago staff hard at work trying to restore the facilities. Here we see the Cayo Santiago staff feeding the monkeys immediately after the storm. Despite the destruction, only a few animals were lost. Immediate assistance and logistical support came from the Better Life, Better Research Foundation and Crowley Maritime Corporation. Additional help was provided by New York University, the Association of Primate Veterinarians, and donations through GoFundMe and other sources. Under the auspices of the International Primatological Society, Angie Ruiz Lambidis of the Caribbean Primate Research Center and Stephen Shapiro of the MD Anderson Center for Comparative Medicine and Research are leading an international group of primatologists in restoration efforts. Financial support is being provided by donations from personal, 
foundation, corporate, and government sources. For the past 80 years, the Cayo Santiago rhesus colony has provided the world with a unique research resource for primate behavioral and biomedical studies. Despite extensive hurricane damage to the island, the colony continues to thrive. In March 2018, research resumed. Throughout the years, support for Cayo Santiago has come from various institutions, especially the National Institutes of Health, the National Science Foundation, and the University of Puerto Rico. We'd also like to thank the following for the use of images in this presentation, Time Life, National Geographic, the Penn State University Libraries, Getty Images, and Google Earth.